Does this box contain the best third-party head sculpt? Let's find out. Hey everyone, Mr. Mom Collectibles here, and I'm really excited to share with you my one six scale review of So So Toys, The Boss Man. Vincent D'Onofrio's portrayal of the Kingpin in the Marvel Netflix series Daredevil. I had this figure on order immediately when it got announced a few months back from So So Toys. I just got it about two days ago, so I'm really excited to do this unboxing review for you to show you the figure in detail, everything he comes with, all the accessories, and my pros and cons list. So let's jump into it right now. Now taking a look at all the accessories the figure comes with, you have an alternate head sculpt, sets of hands, a cane, shirt, and a stand. First, the head sculpt. Once again, great head sculpt. It's the same version as the clean, except they did blood on it to represent the final fight with Daredevil. I'm trying to zoom in there so you can see the paint application it looks really great. I really almost want to take this and kit bash another Kingpin, maybe to represent fight with Punisher, orange jumpsuit. The possibilities are endless when you have two of these. Uh, I do see that there is no blemish on the nose like the clean version. So that's something to note if you do plan on getting this figure. The hands themselves, paint application really great as well, showing you a little bit of blood on the knuckles there. These are the open versions. And then you have the closed fists with blood on the knuckles. And then the final have a little bit of an open hand that you can alternate to use for the cane. And here is the cane itself. Paint application looks really great to represent what it is. And you have the diamond on the end of the cane. The light hits it, it really does look nice. So I'll be posing my figure with this. You also have an alternate shirt, which I'll have on the character. This represents the final fight. They have blood all on the vest. The paint looks really great on this. You can see it's heavy there, staining there. It looks really great. I do notice that there is yellow on areas of the lapel opens up via Velcro. And I kind of wish they did added a little bit more blood on the inside. Uh, when you close it up, the blood stops right there where it's exposed, but then when you happen to open it, it does stop. So maybe they could have added just a little bit more blood there just to continue that down. But I'll put this on the figure in a few moments to take a look at it. And then finally, the display base has the Daredevil 2Ds there. No name on the front, just the DD, so it's generic, has a crotch grabber. Um, this here is raised. It looks like have, there's blood on it, so it's a nice little touch there. This isn't flat. This is actual raised metal here, so it has it's all plastic, but it gives you a nice metal look, but these little indentations are raised, so this is nice. Now, looking at the figure up close, the first thing that really jumps out at you is the head sculpt. To me, I think it's a dead ringer for Vincent D'Onofrio, the actor. Uh, so So Toys, they really hit it out of the park for a third party sculpt. I think it's one of the best that I've seen. Um, the one thing I really like about this sculpt that I that's a really big deal for me is that depending on how I'm posing the figure, can it maintain the likeness of the figure? There's a lot of sculpts out there that looking at dead on uh, in a museum pose, it looks great, but as you start to manipulate the sculpt, posed in different directions, it may or may not start to lose the likeness of the character. This is one, in my opinion, that no matter which way you look at it, you look at it from the left, you look at it from the right, it's it, it's Vincent D'Onofrio. There's no way to, uh, to argue that. There is one thing I did notice on mine is that right there on the tip of the nose, there is a paint blemish. So I'm going to have to have that either touched up or figure out a way to get that taken care of. Um, moving down to the suit, the suit itself has a really high sheen to it. Uh, it fits, it hugs the character really well. It really sits well on the character for as big as what the character is and the fat suit underneath. Now I did notice in some of the Facebook groups of people getting their first hands on this figure is the lapel. And on mine, you can kind of see it right there on the edges going right up on both sides. There is a yellowing to it. Um, it it's evident really when light hits it and on camera. When you see it in hand, it's really hard to see, but it is definitely there. This is a little bit different than uh, the Mars Toys uh, Joker, the meme, where the white shirt on mine, the collar, it looks really yellow, like it's stained. But this one, it really is depending on how the light hits it and when you photograph it, how this yellow picks up. So it's a little bit different depending on the scenario that the figure's in. Now, 
Another thing is when I opened up the figure and trying to pose it, the ankle joints. Mine are extremely weak. This figure actually fell over quite a few times when doing this video. Um, he does handle a museum pose pretty well, but anything outside of that, I might consider using the stand for. Um, the other thing is the right arm. Uh, when I got the figure in hand, I heard a rattling inside the box and it was the hand. The right hand was actually loose, um, which has happened with third party figures before, but I went to go try to reattach it and the actual wrist peg snapped in half. Half of it was inside the arm, the other half was in the hand. So what I had to do is use a blow dryer on the arm itself to heat it up till it got nice and warm. And then I used a pair of tweezers and I was able to pull that right out. Luckily, I have a lot of spares from other figures. If you've been collecting a while, you'll have a lot of spare items. In this case, I was able to use a, a wrist peg from a uh, Hot Toy Snow Speeder Luke that I had. So I swapped that out, no problem. Um, one thing that I noticed also that isn't in the box is the hands. Now these hands are bloodied to represent the final battle with Daredevil, but the figure does not come with a clean set of hands. All of the hands that come with the figure are all bloodied in one way or another. So that's something that I kind of wish So-So would have included is minimally just one spare set. Um, for me, I will be displaying the figure in this pose, in this suit. Um, I will not be using the bloody one. I will show you what that looks like, but for me, it's gonna be clean. So what I'm gonna be doing is grabbing another set of hands from another figure that I'm not using, a spare set, and I'll swap those out. But I kind of wish So-So Toys did include those for those people who don't have that luxury of having spare items. And then one other thing to know from a quality control point of view, uh, scuffing on the shoes. Uh, it's right there, you can see there's some scuffing on that side, and then there's a little bit of scuffing along the back here. I'm gonna try to get that cleaned up with some uh, either paint or something like that, but I did notice people in the Facebook group getting their their versions of the figure, um, didn't notice that as well. Um, one other thing as well, mine looks pretty good on the pants, but people have been commenting about there being staining on the pants. My suit overall, aside from the yellow, is in pristine condition. The only thing with the suit, as I mentioned, is the yellow. Um, but after that, uh, the suit looks really great. What I'm gonna do now is actually take the vest off. The vest itself is Velcro, and there is a fat suit underneath here. So I'm gonna replace this with the bloodied version and the head sculpt so you can see what the bloodied version of this figure looks like if you're interested in displaying yours that way. Hey guys, so I was doing an undressing of the figure, getting ready to put the bloody suit on there. And as I mentioned, I just want you guys to see what this body looked like. Uh, very muscular body, and they did put a Velcro fat suit on him, which I think really does to give the character the form that he needs. But here you go. This is all cushiony here with straps. So this is the fat suit that is on the figure now, as you can see, but really fits the character well. So I think this is a really great body choice, and adding the fat suit was a really great touch to the figure. And here we have the alternate version to the Kingpin, which is the bloodied version. Uh, as I mentioned, representing the final fight that he had with Daredevil in his penthouse. As I said, fantastic alternate sculpt to be used. This one has to be used on a third party kit bash or something like that. Um, as I mentioned, there is no blemish on the nose here, just to take note. Um, the sculpt, once again, it's the same sculpt used on the previous. They just did a fantastic job on the paint application representing the blood. Uh, the suit itself, as I mentioned, you can see all the paint drops, all the staining, heavy to, heavy to light on the vest. There is the yellowing, as you see it there. This is much more prominent. This actually almost looks like a stain versus the other one kind of looks much more mild. This is very evident, whether it's in, fig in hand or photographed under a light box or in natural conditions. So that is something to take note of. Um, changing out the outfit wasn't too hard like any other figure, but as I said, this is a really great version if you want this one um, in your collection, fighting Daredevil, because I know the Hot Toys version of Daredevil has a bloodied sculpt. Um, you can do that, mix and match, but this is a really great alternate representation. I really think you get a lot for your money uh, with So So Toys on this one. And the sculpt, I just really can't say enough about the sculpt for a third party. It's definitely one of the better head sculpts that I've seen um, out there. And in my collection, I really can't wait um, to have this one displayed up with the rest of my figures. And here's just to give you an idea of height comparison to other figures. I have the Hot Toys Tom Holland and the Hot Toys Classic Suit Spider-Man. And I think the proportions look really fantastic next to each other. Uh, there's a good amount of height difference between the characters, as it should be. Uh, Vincent D'Onofrio is a big guy, but, you know, not overtowering. So I really think the proportions look really well. And I really think these guys fit together really great when they're going to be on the shelf together. Um, I'll have one more pose for you guys. 
which I have my villains, so I will put the kingpin next to a couple guys that you might like, and I think it's gonna set up for a really great shot. The other thing that I love about the kingpin is the versatility of the character. He could be a main antagonist, or he could be the guy behind the scenes pulling the strings, assembling the team together, uh, like he did in the 90s animated series where he pretty much assembled the Sinister Six on his own. Um, and in this case, we have Mysterio, Venom, and Green Goblin, my little uh, villain mashup, so to speak. Uh, I really love how he fits. This is probably how I'm gonna have him displayed. Um, and as I get more villains in the future with future Hot Toy releases, um, it's gonna make the shelf just look so much better. My final thoughts on this figure, in my opinion, I think it's obviously a home run to get this guy. I went over some pros and cons with him. Obviously, the head sculpt is great. The overall presence of the figure, the shelf presence is going to be great. Um, and I like the alternate options of how, we, how you can display him. Just wrapping up my final thoughts on the SoSo -So Toys, the Boss Man. I still think this figure is absolutely great. I think it's going to command really great shelf presence and it has a lot of versatility in how you can display him whether it be with spider-man daredevil punisher even a sinister six like i'm trying to shoot for uh overall it's a great figure from so so toys and i like the alternate head sculpt they give you a third party kit bash option from different versions in the tv show um like i said some of the negatives the yellowing on the suit here which definitely gets picked up on camera and lighting. Um, and also mine, which has the blemish on the nose. I haven't seen anybody else's have the nose issue, just the lapel and also the scuffing on the shoes, which the shoes can get taken care of. And also the jacket, if you decide to display him without it and just have a shirt and vest, not a problem whatsoever. So it, there is some workarounds to it. It is a third party, uh, third party figures do have some quality control issues at times. They're not up to the level of Hot Toys or any other name brands like that. But as I mentioned, I still think it's a home run. It's still something to be picked up. The head sculpt speaks for itself. It's phenomenal. Um, I think it's a really great figure overall. And it's gonna be look really great in my, in my shelf with other figures. So as I said, thank you so much for watching. This is Mr. Mom Collectibles. Make sure you check out the channel. I'll definitely have some more reviews coming up in live streams. Also my Instagram, Mr. Mom's Collectibles. Uh, like, subscribe, share. Thank you so much and have a great rest of your day.